Uh, welcome, Richard. Thank you. So I've, I've been very much looking forward to this conversation because Numera is, is so uh, fascinating to me. So it combines like all, all the cool things, all the cool things I like. So it's like hedge fund and it has uh, AI and it has like network effects and it has crypto and token economics. Uh, so like, you know, all, all, the, all the cool things in, uh, in, in just one, one company. Uh, so let's start from the top. What is Numerai? Uh, well, it's definitely all those things. Um, I mean, the, 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 the thing we're trying to solve is predicting the stock market um, and, and getting really good intelligence about that um, particular problem. But why it's interesting is that a lot of people think maybe, maybe that's uh, impossible. Uh, and so how would you go about it if it was, if it was considered this very, very hard problem? Um, and the way we go about it is by, first of all, giving away all of our data so that anyone can build any model that they want on our data set using any machine learning algorithm or any approach. And the next thing you need is incentives. You need someone incentives not to overfit, right? You don't want to make a back test that looks good on historical data, but doesn't look good on live data. And so, um, we make our users stake cryptocurrency on their models. Um, and so we have the best modeling talent because we have much more, uh, more, many more data scientists working on Numerai than any other hedge fund in the world. And we have the best incentives because all of our, everyone who's working on the, the, the models that we use for trading um, are staking them. So they're fully aligned. Um, and so, putting those things together over time, we're just getting better and better and better and better at, uh, at this problem. And, um, and it's, it's starting to, to really work at the moment. Yeah, cool. All right, so we're gonna take all, all those elements and like gonna break them down one by one, uh, but very much to, to your point. So this is really working. Uh, so you, you published, I think last fall, a few months ago, the, the first uh, numbers that you talked about publicly. And uh, as it turns out, you, you beat some of the very best quant hedge funds in the world by quite a wide margin. Do you want to comment? Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously there's some disclaimers here. It's like uh, past performance doesn't mean future results and things like that. But we, we, um, we have done quite well. And what we're doing is running the whole strategy in a market neutral context. Um, so it only makes sense to compare us with other market neutral hedge funds. Um, and there are many. What, what, does that, what does that mean uh, for people that don't spend time in that world? Yeah, it means you don't take any um, net exposure to the market, meaning uh, every hundred dollars of long positions you have in different companies, you, you also have to have a hundred dollars of short positions. Um, so we're never t taking any um, directional exposure to the market. And, um, you know, for example, in March 2020, when the market fell 30% in about 20 days, um, we were down one and a half percent. So whatever's happening in the market would not give you an indication of how well we're doing. Whereas most funds that you heard of, uh, like a Warren Buffett kind of fund or uh, Kathy Wood, ARK, these types of funds are very exposed to basically risk factors in the market. Um, so we built a market neutral strategy and it's a, so it's a sophisticated strategy that's really suitable for institutional investors who already have tons of market exposure. They don't need us to buy stocks for them. They want a sophisticated, uncorrelated strategy. Um, and so that's what we've built. Okay, very cool. So, um, so to summarize, you're an AI powered, sort of crowdsourced um, hedge fund where a bunch of data scientists around the world can contribute models who is based on, on data that, that you provide and, and sort of compete and uh, also put skin in the game via cryptocurrency. Um, so uh, assuming that's correct, let, let's let's break down those like different components. So like the, the, the data part. Um, so obviously as we, as everybody that attends, attends those events knows, um, the AI and machine learning really depends on the quality of, of data. Uh, in the hedge fund world, that's particularly important. Uh, where does the data come from? What kind of data do you provide? Um, and um, And how do you, anonymize it as well. So I guess th three questions in one. Yeah. Well, that is the one unique thing. I mean, when I say we give out all of our data, 
it's all in this obfuscated way. So if you look at the features of our data, you have no idea what they correspond to. They might correspond to the PE ratios of stocks or the momentum or anything. And there are thousands of them, um, uh, but uh, you don't know what they are. And so all you have is the data and you also don't know what the rows are. You don't know what stocks correspond to what features. So it's and, pure um, numbers. It's just pure numbers. It's literally a, uh, like millions and millions of numbers between zero and one. And that's what you get when you download our data. So if you are a quant or someone who works in finance, you're typically like, whoa, I can't even use this website. Uh, this <laughs> this isn't, a, isn't a finance problem or a quant problem. It is purely a data science problem. And so we've sort of massaged all the data into this pure data science problem. And so people who have expertise with machine learning are extremely used to this. Um, you know, the people at Google Translate are not really good at languages. They're good at machine learning. Um, and, you know, on a, in a Kaggle competitions, you can model healthcare data, you can model whale sounds data, you can model financial data. It's all the same um, problem. Uh, and, um, and that's what people didn't get. And so numerize, the, even though they've maybe been attempts to kind of crowdsource stock tips from the internet, this is not what Numerai does. Numerai is about crowdsourcing machine learning models built on our very kind of custom data set. Um, and where, where do you get the data from? You, 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 you buy it, you... Uh... So we get it from a lot of sources, the raw data. We get yeah. from a lot of different sources and we buy um, this, you know, some of this data would be quite expensive for an individual to buy. You know, we probably spend more than a million dollars a year on data. Um, but it's not, what we're giving out is so different from what the raw data is that, um, that you know, it's very, very, very far removed from any of the source data. Um, and is it, but, is it, sorry, go ahead. But yeah, it is important to know. I mean, like, I think there's some, in there's some discussion around alternative data in finance. Yeah. And um Numerai is and alternative data for, for folks that don't spend uh, again time in, in that in that in that space. That's uh, uh, you know traffic on parking lots and uh, uh, you know data that that is not typically financial, but that hedge funds have been sort of mining to extract signal from over the last few years. Exactly, um, and so there's that's quite a popular thing to discuss. But in a weird way, the more alternative the data. The shorter it usually is, like it doesn't, for example, if you had some data on social media, um, maybe it only goes back to 2008, some type of sentiment data on social media. Um, so it only goes back to 2008. So then that's not very long because that's pretty much one gigantic boom cycle um, since then. Um, so you might not be able to learn very much that will generalize out of sample on short data sets like that. So I would say in general, we have, you know, we have some alternative data, lots of alternative data, but um, we're mainly focusing on data that's very, very long. And so the long, the more data you have, the better your model is gonna be uh, and the more, more robust it will be to future events. All right. So, um, so I'm a data scientist or machine learning person somewhere around the world, I get this big data dump. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's a lot of numbers. I try to build my models to extract patterns and predict. Um, and then, uh, and by the way, you said, so I, I only need to be a, a super strong machine learning or data scientist person. I don't need to know anything about the financial market, right? So, so who, who are the, the, the kind of people that you have uh, that do this? Who, who are they on the whole? Are they, are they young aspiring people that are trying to, um, you know, build a resume? Are they, uh, you know, people that do as a, that as a side job? Who are they? Yeah, there are all kinds of people. And um you know, some of them are anonymous. So some of them we don't know. In fact, some of the best ones, we, we kind of have no idea. Um, so, you know, but some, we have with one really good user who works at NASA Jet Propulsion Lab um, and who's really uh, strong uh, 
at data science and he's actually working on a, a mission to one of Jupiter's moons. And then <laughs> on his other tab, he's, he's got Numerai open and he's modeling the stock market. That's very cool. Um, and I actually went to visit him at NASA and it's, it's crazy <laughs> that this is like real. Um, and there are actually others, another guy at CERN uh, who's really amazing, uh, one of the top users. Um, but yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to reveal who you are. And I will say there are a couple of people who, who maybe were interested in finance, but didn't know machine learning. And then they've kind of self-taught. So we had one PhD or professor of finance who is a big, big data scientist on Numerai, but it yeah. could be anyone. But is that, is that a good place to learn, right? Because it's, uh, you, uh, it's on the website or Twitter or somewhere that um, it's described as the hardest uh, data science competition in, in the world. Is that if I'm a, a student and I'm looking to learn, is that, a, is that a good place or is that something I should do later in my career? Um, it is a good, it is a good place to learn, um, but it is not for the faint of heart. And that's why we do say it's the hardest data science tournament because it's, you know, it's a very difficult problem. And some of the normal machine learning problems, say you're trying to classify spam or something, you can get like 89% accurate um, on Numerai to get a one or 2% correlation with the future returns of the stock market. It's very difficult. Um, so a lot of the best people are using, yeah, very new techniques and, uh, you might not, you might struggle just messing around, but it's definitely worth trying and it's instant, you know, you can instantly download our data and, and create a model within a few minutes, um, to get started, but yep. it's, it's hard to be good. <laughs> And it, you mentioned uh, that concept of tournaments. I, I saw that you have two running. You have a Numerai tournament and Numerai, Numerai signals, if I read correctly. What, what, what are those and what do you, why do you have two? So, yeah, good question. So Numerai is, um, we, give out, we give you this data, you model it. Um, signals is, go find your own data. Use whatever data you want and then model your own data and then submit that. So this idea is, uh, Numerai's mission is to kind of monopolize intelligence and monopolize data and then monopolize money and then decentralize the monopoly. So that's the, the master plan, right? Like that's, that's, that's yeah, yeah, master plan. That's so, awesome. I, I wish I had a master plan. That, that sounds that's pretty awesome to have one. Yes, it has been pretty good to uh, direct our energies um, and we've never changed it. Um, so yeah, on Numerai, we've, we've got this data and so it's like, what about this? The people who are very good at modeling but don't have any access to data. Let's make sure we can assimilate their intelligence into our hedge fund. And then there are people who already have models, uh, but they have no way of trading because they don't want to, you know, they need ten million dollars to use a prime broker or whatever. So then let's make sure they can submit. And that's what Numerai signals is. So we're trying to just get all these different sources of intelligence um, into our fund so that we can be the best and um, ultimately tr manage all the money in the world. Great. So we talked about the data, we talked about the, the, the users. Um, what, so what happens when, when like you get like a bunch of different models from a lot of different people? Uh, I, I read somewhere you have a concept of meta model. Like is that, is, do you put them together and how do you do it? Yeah, so we do. So everyone's providing signals on all 5,000 stocks and global equities. And we take the stake weighted average of all those signals. So, so true, if, if, if a lot of people have staked um, on Google, then uh, with Google as a high rank in their signal, then that stock would be something um, the meta model would want to buy next. Um, and so and do you, do you want to explain what uh, staking is for people that uh, don't necessarily spend time in crypto? Yeah, so staking is, a very simple but important um, thing you can do with a blockchain. Um, and uh, the idea is you can lock up some cryptocurrency in a smart contract um, and no one, you're not trusting anyone to keep it. So it's like a bit like an escrow. You're not trusting anyone um, to not steal it. Um, and so Numerai, you come in with your NMR, cryptocurrency and that you can buy on Coinbase or something. And, and that, you that's your currency, right? NMR stands for Numerare? Exactly. Yeah. That's our own one. And uh, you can take it and stake it. And um, 
if your model performs well on Numerai, we'll give you more NMR tokens. And if your model performs badly, we can burn your stake. So it's this very strong incentive to make sure that your model performs well on live data. So it's, it's, it's literally uh, uh, having skin in the game. Exactly, exactly. And it's a you know, critical thing, like the, in some ways, that's almost like the problem of the, of the internet. Um, you don't have anything at stake uh, and you, you, therefore you can do th things that are bad. Like you can make 10,000 accounts on Numerai and just hope that one of them gets lucky. Hmm. But if you told you have to stake, well, then you're only gonna stake on the ones that are good, that are actually likely to work. Uh, so you're basically <coughs> policing um, yourself more because you have something at stake. Yeah. And, and you said that your model is more likely to make it to the final calculation if you stake more? Yeah, we actually only trade the models that are staked. The but if you, stake, if you stake more NMR, and NMR you, you, you're more likely to be taken into account as yeah. opposed to... Okay. Like if you are 5% of the total amount staked, which would be high, like half a million dollars, then we would weight you 5% in the, in the meta model. So the more you believe in yourself, the more we'll believe in your model. And, and that's, you presumably you believe in yourself because you tested your model on past data and, and you got high performance, exactly. therefore you're, really, you, you're willing to uh, put your money where your mouth is, okay. So there's all kinds of things you can do to, to, to cross validate a, a model really well. Um, and so, yeah, it's not really like we're trying to test whether the person um, believes it, you know, like has a thesis about stocks or something. It's much more like how much, how much, how many, how many different kinds of tests have you done with this model yeah. that you're willing to ship it. Um, to be part of the meta model and right. that's their stake on. And how does that work? Putting all those models together is that a, is there like an assembling technique that's well known, or is that something that you guys build? We do like it's literally as simple right now as the stake weighted average. So it's just the average with the stake weights, and it's we've actually tried many times to beat that, but it's hard to beat. Because if we try something else, like, well, why don't we just wait, upweight the ones that have done well recently? Um, then suddenly they, they don't work and they, they start doing badly. And so you, you, always, you always want to trust the users to be the ones who know the most. And they're expressing how confident they are with the stake. So we can never really beat the stake-weighted model. However, um, as it comes to trading time in this process, we still have to choose what portfolio to construct. So we have, when we have the meta model, we have predictions on 5,000 stocks and we have to decide which ones to hold in our current portfolio. And, uh, and that is an optimization process that we are in charge of. So we've made our own custom optimizer that minimizes all kinds of market risks and ends up with a final portfolio. Yeah, and people are making a uh, real substantial money with this, right? Like I, did I did I read correctly? I think I think I saw like a forty-two million number of like payout. <coughs> yeah, we have. Is that, is that the right number? Yeah, we have paid out something like that. Um, we've even, I think, even just last year we paid ten million dollars. So it's so much higher than the the rewards are so much higher than the other data science competitions on online by orders of magnitude. Um, and there's some users that have made more than a million dollars. Uh, and the reason is, is kind of because of crypto, right? Our cryptocurrency um, is what we use to pay people. So the thing you do have to get your head around, you know, is do I really want to have the risk of holding this cryptocurrency, which, which is quite volatile? Um, but some users buy in for a small amount and then um, and their stakes end up doing well. And it's also important to note, like, when you do badly on Numerai, it's not like Numerai does well. It's not like we take your stake. It's like not like we're the house or something. Uh, the, all the staking is happening on the blockchain. And if you do badly, it's just that the NMR gets burned. Um, so it's very user 
aligned. And um, that's why I think we have, yeah, about right now over $15 million at stake. It's fascinating. A question from Tony uh, in, in the group um, asking about the business model, the revenue model, uh, if, if the data, is, <coughs> if the, <coughs> sorry, data science is outsourced. So business model is simple. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hedge fund. So we, we, when we sell the fund to big investors, basically. So a big investor could come and give us $100 million dollars and we would charge um, two and 20 on the, on the investment. Um, and, and if the performance is really good, uh, that is a, is a very, very good business model. Um, so that's always been the idea is just like have a simple business model of charging fees for how well we can do, um, but making sure that we have something that Because what often happens with these quant funds is they have they have a good year and then they have a bad year and then they kind of die. Um, but we wanted to build something that would credibly be get better and better and better. And like just a year ago, we had um, you know three times fewer users. And the year before that, it was three times. So it's, so it's like 10 times more staked models than than two years ago. And over a hundred times more at stake. Um, so it's like growing in a way that only an internet company can grow, and not the, not the way that a quant a traditional quant fund can grow. Yeah, and people uh, keep their models right, or, or, or they, they just contribute the results of the model. Yeah, exactly. They they never give us their code. They're never assigning us IP around their models. Um, they can train them in any way they want, keep them on any server they want. The only thing they have to do is provide us the predictions every week, um, the freshest predictions. Uh, yeah. So for the users, it's, uh, it's kind of cool that way, that they're not trusting us. You can always quit. Question from Philip. Uh, how much of the performance is function of the feature engineering you expose rather than the model themselves? That's uh, a better, good yeah. Could better or crowdsource features have a bigger impact than the models? Yeah. So the, it's a good question because if you know data science, uh, which you probably do, um, a lot of this is about setting up the problem well and having not just good data, but also setting up the data and the problem well, um, and a lot of the performance comes from, from that. Um, but if we do a, say a linear model just on our, and on our data, it sort of performs okay. Um, if we do uh, our own internal machine learning model on the data, it performs better than that. And if we use everyone's model that's being submitted to Numeri, it's way better than, than even that. So it's always going to be like, Yes, there's some edge that's coming directly from the data, but it's very much worth it to get the extra edge, um, especially in the finance domain where let's say you're, you're, current, you're currently 52% right. If you can go to 52.5% right, it's like, it's like a whole different um, level of, of performance for the end investor, a whole different level of sharp ratio or returns and risk. So, Um, it's, a uh, it, it's very helpful. However, uh, Numeri signals is in some ways the crowdsourcing of, of features. Uh, people can submit whatever data they want, um, on that. So any gaps in Numeri can kind of be filled by the crowdsourcing on signals. Yep. It's a related question if, if it, from Adam. If the data is all just numbers that are unlabeled, how can you model individual assets to invest in? You're, you're kind of not modeling individual assets. You're, it's, a, it's sort of set up like a cross-sectional uh, panel data problem um, where you're looking for the relationship between assets. Um, so every, every um, model... On Numerite, the target variable is residual return. 
So it's a return with all the factors taken out, the sectors taken out, um, and, and you're looking at it in a cross-sectional way. So you're trying to find a signal that has correlation with residual return. Um, so no one, no one is, no one has, no one on Numeri has any particular insight into Tesla or, or something, but they do have insight into um, the relationships between stocks and those relationships can be used to build portfolios. A question from uh, Alex. Like, uh, clearly, you're uh, getting people uh, excited about the the prospects because Alex is asking, why not open uh, to individuals to invest uh, <laughs> or allow users to passively stake NMR, NMR uh, for profits or residual value from fund from the fund? It's a good question. I mean, we get that quite a lot. Um, it is uh, sort of unfortunate that um, at the end of this process, which is so driven by modern uh, ideas, like you know, anyone can submit this completely open system, anyone can join Numeri, anyone can stake. But at the end of this process, we have a hedge fund that is basically closed to everybody except for like seven investors in the world. Um, and the reason it's done that way though is that there are regulations about selling hedge funds to um, people with, it's kind of sad, I think. If you have less than a million dollars or whatever it is, you're not considered an accredited investor. And therefore, certain investment products are not uh, available to you. As if money is the total determinant of whether you're sophisticated. Yep. <laughs> hardly, hardly debated topic, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it would be quite cool if we ha could have on our website, here's an Ethereum address, or he all you have to do is send money to this address and you'll be in our fund. Uh, if we did that, we'd be breaking so many different rules, including KYC rules, accredited investor rules, and all these rules that are supposed to protect investors and, and secure the financial system. Um, but uh, so that's one of the reasons. Uh, but it doesn't preclude us from 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 thinking about other products. So for example, mutual funds are uh, investable by normal people uh, and, and, and much, and, and then same with ETFs. Um, so it's definitely crossed my mind that at some point uh, we might be able to make uh, an investment product that is much more um, suitable for the average person. Um, there are even tax reasons why hedge funds are not the right things for people. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good question. And I, in terms of NMR staking on other people, uh, it, it might not help us that much. It kind of might hurt us. So the idea is if you're just a speculator holding NMR and you want to just help Numeri, but you're not a data scientist, why can't you stake on someone else? And uh, the problem is, why would you know anything about their future performance. The whole point of staking is to get an assessment of how much they believe their model will generalize, um, not just to get the person who's the best at marketing his stake to, to, to a speculator. Um, but I also think there might be some things in the future where we can do something like that, um, because Numeri has been quite a, uh, I would say, kind of a speculator hostile project where we've basically put the data science first, put the hedge fund first, and we just happen to make a cryptocurrency right in the beginning of the whole crypto game. Like back in 2017 is when we made NMR. Um, but in the long run, there's some exciting things happening and I'm sure we'll be able to, to take NMR to the next level with ideas like that. Very, very interesting. All right, uh, one last question from the group and then uh, maybe one question from me and we'll wrap up. Um, question from uh, Patricia and um, uh, sort of uh, my, my, my spin on the question is, um, uh, you know, it, 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 Patricia mentioned it, it normally takes, you know, a few years to know if it's, if a model is working. Like, how, how do you know, like what, when do you, how many years do you need to like feel that, okay, well this, uh, you know, we had a, a good couple of years, but like this thing is like really working long-term. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and it's, uh, it, it really does depend. So the, the, 
they are often a, the heuristics in the industry of like, well, I'm not going to trust anyone's track record unless it's three years long or five years long. And, you know, maybe that's why people can trust like a Warren Buffett or something, because he's kind of one of the only people with uh, 50 years long or whatever it is. Um, but the, it's not true in reality that uh, you can't tell things sooner than that. And it just depends on how the trading happens. So if I, for example, um, if I flip a coin uh, a thousand times and I get 600 heads and I, and I managed to flip a thousand coins in, in just one month, it just took me one month to do the process, let's say. So I flip a couple of coins a day and I get to a thousand and I get 600 heads. That is very statistically significant. Uh, you can use a formula called the cumulative binomial distribution, and you can say the odds of that happening without that coin being biased towards heads is close to 0%. Um, now, in a market neutral quant fund, uh, there's all kinds of things that are different about this coin flipping scenario, in particular, uh, stocks are correlated with each other, so they're not like independent trials. Um, but uh, there are things you can do um, that can make can help the assessment. So we trade about a um, thousand stocks at a time, five hundred long, five hundred short, and um, if every month it's five hundred and fifty long, five hundred fifty being right out of a thousand. Um, and you do that for 18 months in a row, it does get to this very credible point uh, that uh, you do have an edge. Um, and, uh, and so for, for sophisticated investors, they can be quite bright about this type of thing. Uh, if you just put all your money in Bitcoin and for three years it went up, there's something not as good about that as if you put, if you invest in a thousand things, and you and you got uh, on average fifty five percent of them right, and so that's the type of argument we would make about our track record. Cool. All right. Well, this is absolutely fascinating, and I, I actually uh, would have like another, you know. 30 questions for you, but like we, we, um, we out of time, uh, really, really appreciate your, uh, coming and like telling the story to the, to the group and congratulations on everything you've built. It's, it's one of the, you know, most like intellectually interesting and, uh, you know, things out there that I've seen in a, in a while. And on top of, of it all, it seems to be, uh, working, uh, you know, amazingly from a financial standpoint. So, uh, congrats and, um, thank you. Thanks so much.